Hello, I'm Dr. Bonnie Bowles. I'm the Vice President of Clinical Integration here at Tanner. I started my career at Tanner in the ICU of Tanner Medical Center Villa Rica. We use ventilators in the ICU and I'm here today to talk to you about ventilators. I also would like to talk to you about something that the American public has never had to face before and that is the prospect of having to ration medical goods and services on a scale that's predicted in the coming weeks. A ventilator is a life-sustaining piece of medical equipment that we use when someone's lungs excuse me, can't deliver enough oxygen to their body for them to live. A ventilator uses positive pressure to force air into your lungs, which is the opposite of the way we naturally breathe. The ventilator forces air into your lungs via a tube that passes down between your vocal cords and into your breathing tube called your trachea. This novel coronavirus called COVID-19 disease attacks your lungs and your lower airway very aggressively. If you're lucky, you can still breathe. Many patients cannot breathe and describe a feeling of suffocation. Those that are suffocating and can't maintain oxygen require a ventilator, which is the only hope to keep the oxygen level high enough for them to survive the disease. Patients with COVID-19 who need the ventilator will require hospitalization, obviously, during this pandemic. And we estimate, based on what is happening, that 2.4 to 21 million Americans over the course of this pandemic in the coming weeks will require hospitalization. The problem is that one in 10 to one in four of those people will need to be put on a ventilator. Imagine a tube down your throat, pushing air in to keep you alive. This means that you cannot talk, you cannot eat and you cannot go to the bathroom. You have tubes going in to feed you, you have tubes in your veins for medication, and you have tubes coming out of you and your bladder for urine. You have to be kept asleep or you would be so uncomfortable you would try to pull everything out and not even know it. Your family cannot visit you. You have to be allowed to come out of sedation every day to wake up just to make sure you're still in there and see if you're ready to come off the ventilator. It's very uncomfortable to find that you're not, especially at in this disease, which we're seeing 10 to 21 days of ventilator support is typically needed. But we have to test and see when you're ready and then resedate you. The US currently has about 170,000 ventilators. You may be hearing on the news that many companies are beginning to make parts for ventilators. Ventilators are complex machines with many parts and many of the companies will make one part and then get together to assemble the ventilators. The problem is they can't be made fast enough. I just told you some numbers, and if we take the lowest numbers that are predicted, we will need about 240,000 ventilators over the next couple of weeks. We have 170,000 in the United States. Our medical societies are partnering with our ethics and palliative or comfort care doctors, nurses and chaplains to face the very real chance that, like in Italy, we'll have to decide who lives and who dies. How can that be happening in the United States? We are trying to tell you that this is really happening. This is why social distancing and sheltering at home are so important. No one has to get this virus and get sick, and no one has to go on a ventilator, and healthcare teams definitely shouldn't have to make gut-wrenching and heartbreaking decisions that will haunt all of us, our families, the families of survivors and those who die from this pandemic for the rest of our lives. Young people are getting sick, although we know that older adults and people with underlying health conditions are more likely to become severely ill. But young people are spreading the virus and they don't even realize it. They are much less likely to use hand sanitizer. Let's face it, do they use hand sanitizer after pumping gas? Are they wiping down surfaces before touching them? Probably not. Are they washing their hands and not touching their face? This is an issue. So please stay home, stay safe and try to stay well. Keep those healthy hand hygiene practices, avoid groups, and most importantly, take this seriously. Your life or the life of someone you love depends on it. Prevent being in a situation where a machine has to breathe for you or your loved one who will be all alone and afraid in an ICU being taken care of by people trying to help but total strangers. Before this is over, we will all likely know someone who has died from this disease unless we do what we can right now. You can help us save the most lives possible during this unprecedented crisis. Please stay home. Thank you.